and all God's people shall see together the glory of the Lord. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway, a highway for In the name of the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus, the love of God, the gifts of the Holy Spirit be with you. And with Good evening. Good evening and welcome as we begin our second week in the Advent journey. We are again reminded that we are in need of a Savior and Redeemer. And the good news is that we have one in Jesus. And so, let us prepare our hearts as we ask forgiveness for all our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me too. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to God's company. But Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, give comfort to my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and proclaim to her that her service is at an end. Her guilt is expiated. Indeed, she has received from the hand of the Lord double for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the desert prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the wasteland a highway for our God. Every valley shall be filled in. Every mountain and hill shall be made low. The rugged land shall be made a plain. The rough country a broad valley. Then the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go up onto a high mountain, Zion, herald of glad tidings. Cry out at the top of your voice, Jerusalem, herald of good news. 
Fear not to cry out and say to the cities of Judah, Here is your God. Here comes with power the Lord God, who rules by his strong arm. Here is his reward with him, his recompense before him. Like a shepherd, he feeds his flock. In his arms, he gathers the lambs, carrying them in his bosom, and leading the ewes with care. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not ignore this one fact, beloved, that with the Lord one day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like one day. The Lord does not delay his promise as some regard delay, but he is patient with you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. But the day, the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a mighty roar and the elements will be dissolved by fire, and the earth and everything done on it will be found out. Since everything is to be dissolved this way, what sort of persons ought you to be? Conducting yourselves in holiness and devotion, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be dissolved in flames and the elements melted by fire. But according to his promise, we await new heavens and a new earth, in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you await these things, be eager to be found without spot or blemish before him at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Uh, 
Be with you. And with your A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory Glory to the, Lord. The, beginning, the beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I am sending my messenger ahead of you. He will prepare your way. A voice of one crying out in the desert, Prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. John the Baptist appeared in the desert proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. People of the whole Judean countryside and all the inhabitants of Jerusalem were going out to Jesus and were going out to John the Baptist and were being baptized by John and the Jordan River as they acknowledged their sins. John was clothed in camel's hair with a leather belt around his waist. He fed on locust and wild honey. And this is what he proclaimed. One mightier than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and loosen the thongs of his sandals. I have baptized you with water. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. So on Thursday evening and Friday morning and afternoon, many of you were gathered here again in church as we celebrated with the whole Catholic Church throughout the entire world the great solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, Mary being conceived, the only one to be conceived without original sin. And such a great solemnity is placed in the middle of December as we prepare for the coming of Christ because it reminds us of the immediacy of this great gift that God has promised, the gift of a Savior, of a Redeemer. And so it sort of prepares us as we move through the Advent season. Last Sunday, be awake. Be alert. And this Sunday and next weekend, we will hear from John the Baptist and his great proclamation, as Jesus will say, the greatest of all the prophets. Again, in his proclamation, he is reminding us of the next step after the Immaculate Conception, that he's calling all of us to repent, to make straight the way of the Lord. This morning, I and three other priests were over at St. Alphonsus hearing confessions for about 50 children who are preparing for their first Holy Communion this coming spring. We here at St. John's will have first confessions after Christmas. But it is one way 
in which we as Catholics and Christians make straits. We take seriously the call of John the Baptist. Repent, make straight, prepare the way of the Lord. People in mental health, psychologists tell us that around the age eight, children are capable of realizing right from wrong. And that is why we as a church in second grade allow children, encourage children to make that preparation of Holy Communion by making their confession, saying, I am sorry for my sins. No matter if we are eight years old preparing for our first Holy Communion or 118 years old, we need to take seriously to mind and heart the words of John the Baptist, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. And the church in its wisdom has the sacrament of reconciliation because we know that path to the Lord, the path to the altar, is not always a very straight path that is filled with many detours and crooked lines and sinful choices. A friend of mine who is now deceased was a school sister, a sister of the sorrowful mother. Sisters of the sorrowful mother used to be very active on the north side of Milwaukee uh, teaching in this, their grade school, the parish of our sorrowful mother, and they also had their mother house up on Titonia Avenue. But Sister Krista was a chaplain in their Catholic hospital down in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And she related to me how one night she was called to the emergency room uh, a young woman of age 22 was there, sort of looked like she was going to die, and indeed she did die after her visit to the hospital. Suffering from pneumonia, living on the streets from age 12 to 22, living off the garbage that people threw in the garbage cans around McDonald's or Arby's, colleges, eating the apples that were half eaten, drinking from the soda cans that were half full. This is how she lived, telling Sister Krista that her life at home was filled with physical and emotional abuse. And so for 10 years, the last 10 years of her life, she was living on the streets. And one of the things she asked Sister Krista is, are you afraid to die? And instead of answering the question, Sister said, are you afraid to die? And this young dying woman said, I am afraid of hell. And through the conversation, Sister Krista arranged that a priest would come and she asked to have her confession heard, and this young woman went to confession in one day, not once, not twice, but three times. And this is where the story gets interesting. She said to Krista in the morning that night, after going to confession for three times, guess who shows up? Satan, in all his ugly, smelly form. You were mine. And then she said, behind this ugly manifestation was this beautiful form of Jesus with his arms outstretched. And he said, she is mine the power of making straight the path, the power of the sacrament of reconciliation. And that is one of the great graces of the sacrament of reconciliation 
to mend our ways with God. On Friday, a deacon preached for our Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception. Part of his homily was on the Hail Mary, and especially the last part of it. At the hour of death, we pray and ask at the hour of death that you are there. And just think that we often say and experience from people that at the hour of death there's this great battle, much like this woman experienced. Satan wanting to get his last licks in and hope that he will be victorious. Jesus there wanting to indeed encourage trust and faith and hope. And then it's really up to the person. What does the person decide? Am I going to be a person of despair? Or am I going to be a person that truly trusts in the love and mercy of God? In these days of Christmas preparation, may we take seriously the invitation of John the Baptist, make straight the way of the Lord. I've come for the renunciation of sin. Many preparations, baking, writing Christmas cards, decorating, celebrating, eating, eating too much, drinking, drinking too much. But may we put in place the most important preparation, and that is making straight our relationship with God, so that when we breathe our last, we might not have this great fight between who we belong to, because as we make straight the way of the Lord, as we prepare the way of the Lord, we are saying, we are yours, O Lord. May this Advent be the best Advent ever by putting the best priority in place, and that is our love of our Savior, asking forgiveness for our sins, and making choices that are godly choices. So we rise as we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adorned and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. To God who desires to be one with us forever, we pray in confidence of our needs. For Pope Francis, Archbishop Listecki, and all the baptized, that God will comfort, nurture, care for us, and lead us to a new day that is free of all illness. The word of the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the body of Christ, that God will give us the energy to pursue conversion. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for openness of heart, that God will renew the gift of the Spirit within us and help prepare the way of Christ. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are alone or in isolation, that God will sustain them, help them be aware of the blessings in their lives, and help us to reach out and accompany them. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are ill, that God will ease their pain, heal them, and restore them to their communities of family and friends. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For an easing of tensions between and within nations, that God will open new paths for communication and the resolution of dis disputes so that they may work together to promote peace and justice. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the members of St. John's Parish for whom this Mass is said, and for those intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty God, like John the Baptist, may our lives proclaim to others to prepare and make way of the Lord. We ask this in all our needs through Christ, our risen Lord. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands to the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings of bread and wine. Since we have no merits to plead our cause, Come to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. 
It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God through Christ. For Jesus assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when Jesus comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we hope. And so with angels and saints we sing your praises. You are indeed holy, O Lord. You are the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time Jesus was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, Jesus took the chalice. Once more, giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which would be poured out for you and many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and confess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity. Together at Francis, our Pope, Jerome, our Archbishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, 
we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church. Graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord Jesus always be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of God's peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Bless those called to share in the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word.
Our parish Christmas concert is tomorrow, at Sunday, December 10th at 4 p.m. in the church. Please join us for an afternoon of beautiful music. Oplatki, or Christmas wafers, and the Advent word among us are available in the narthex. The cost is $2 for each. This year's cookie walk is December 16th and 17th. Order forms for cookies are in the narthex and the parish office. The deadline is December 12th. A reminder that all giving tree gifts must be by the tree by tomorrow, by the end of the 1030 Mass. And script will be sold after all Masses this weekend. Let us pray. Gracious God, replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly ask that through our partaking in the sacred mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. This we ask through Christ our Lord. Saint Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of heavenly hosts, by the power of God, cast into hell all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Mary conceived without sin. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. This Mass is ended. Go forth, make straight the way of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Sweet.